Ken, from your background in physics and working at Sony and thinking about uh, the mind and, and the brain, how do you begin to define consciousness? I think Gloria, the unique sensory experiences, are the hallmarks of consciousness. And Gloria also buffers us because so far it defies our every attempt to you know, elucidate it. And the reason why Gloria are difficult uh, because they are not quantifiable. For example, when it comes to weight or length, <laughs> you can assign numerical values to it, but we cannot do that for Quoria. For example, uh, can you explain to someone what the Quoria of eating a melon fruit is <laughs> if he or she hasn't done it? It's impossible. Yeah. If she has uh, eaten apple, it's difficult to convey to her the concept of <laughs> the quarry of eating melon. <laughs> so this uh, very simple example uh, demonstrates that quarry in general uh, indif uh, unquantifiable. And that's very difficult for us because uh, scientists have uh, traditionally dealt with equations. And in order to put into equations, you need to quantify the properties of things. And so, you know, uh, as far as quarry are uh, unquantifiable, it's really difficult to study them scientifically. And so the principle of science has yeah. to be something that can be reduced to measurement, some kind of measurement. Sure. And the question is, how do you measure qualia? We do measure qualia all the time in a phenomenal experience. You know, subjectively, it's really clear what the redness of red is, mm. isn't it? Yeah. But the question is how you can measure from measure these qualia from objective point of view. Mm. We find it really hard to do so far. Yeah. The difference being the internal first person, what, what I'm doing, first person, yeah. I, that I know. I know what it feels like to smell cheese or see yeah. red or yeah. eat a melon. Uh, but if I'm trying to describe it in general as a third person on the outside, then it seems impossible. Okay. It is impossible, isn't it? <laughs> but I feel, uh, you know, on the other hand, that courier are what mortals most, the most. Because, for example, when you travel to a uh, foreign country like uh, to Japan, and you eat a very nice sushi, yeah. at the end of the day, uh, what really matters is what qualia that experience have given you. It doesn't matter really how expensive the sushi <laughs> piece was, or uh, from which uh, seaport the yeah, yeah. fish came. Yeah. It, it's the qualia that matters. So, you know, by discarding qualia, just because they are not quantifiable or observable in the traditional sense, we are actually ignoring a very important aspect of our phenomenal experience. In, in fact, it's the most important when psychology tried to avoid the internal experience with behaviorism in the early yeah, part yeah. of the 20th yeah. century. Yeah. It was really a disaster. And it was, uh, I, I mean, some research was done, of course, but it really set back the understanding of human psychology for decades. Yeah. Uh, and although qualia uh, is extremely difficult to think about, unless you're doing it, you're really leaving the vast, critical central area unexplored. Exactly, and I think it's possible for somebody to be in the dark for many, many years. I was trained as a physicist. I got my PhD in physics. Uh, it was not until when I was 32 that I realized the world was full of qualia. <laughs> I was riding on the train, back from the laboratory to my home, and I suddenly realized that the train noise that I was hearing was full of choria. <laughs> so no matter what kind of, uh, for example, you can apply Fourier transform, yeah. you know, apply, uh, to That's analyze nice. what kind of frequency the science sound, yeah, sound is made Fourier of. Fourier transformation yeah. mathematically. Yeah, yeah. mathematically. Uh, it, you cannot really get hold of the choria that you are you know, experiencing. Right, right. So this train sound, this is a choreo that yeah. I'm experiencing right now. Yeah. So you can analyze what kind of frequency it is made of. Yeah. But that kind of numerical analysis wouldn't get as a you know hold of the choreo of experience. Uh, what, what it feels like to hear that train. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, can, what can, if, yeah. The, what the, the yeah. analysis of the frequency, which you can do, yeah. won't give you any sense of that. Yeah, that's right. So this is actually this train sound actually got me started on this journey into consciousness studies. 
Before that, I never dreamt that I would be interested in consciousness. <laughs> I always thought consciousness studies was some kind of rubbish, <laughs> no real material. Yeah. But I have now a very different opinion. So, how can you make progress? You've, you already said quality can't be measured, it's, it's impossible to measure, uh, you're a scientist, and, and now you're devoting your life to qualia. Uh, uh, what are you doing? In 1994, a uh, conference started in Tucson about the science of consciousness. Mm. And in the 20 years that have passed since then, I should say nobody has really made a substantial progress. So the science of consciousness, especially as regards qualia, is that difficult. But uh, I think we should be brave to face the fact that there is this buffering aspect of nature because uh, consciousness is, after all, a part of nature. That's my belief. And so, you know, there are guys I know uh, from some scientists that deny the existence of consciousness um, because they have an easier time then because just you know, by ignoring consciousness, <laughs> they can focus on something solvable, something that they can work on. They can publish papers, they can, you know, get awards and okay. so on, but they are not really solving, uh, trying to solve the real hard problem of consciousness. So, you know, in, ch in life you have choice. Uh, you can e either work on an attractable problem, or you can, you know, just choose to work on a seemingly intractable problem and end up maybe not producing so much, <laughs> but that's my life. So I made that choice uh, when I realized that my experience is full of choir, getting on the train, listening to the noise, you know. <laughs>